welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. I'm having a little bit of trouble sorting this group out because it was, first of all, there wasn't a full replay pack. It wasn't uh, pre-organized for me. At the 12 o'clock location, we have Machine starting as the Black Zerg. At the bottom left-hand corner, we have one last probe who I believe is Starsley starting as, it's either Starsley or it is Jesse, and I believe it is Starsley starting as the Purple Protoss. This is on Ascension, and this is BSL Season 14 Hasu League. Yeah, okay, so now I have the... Interesting. <laughs> so I chose... I, I did, I think, the winner's match, and I messed up the... This is the replay intended to have. So point being, to the Twitch audience, I casted a game that was mislabeled and everything. One of those days. But we'll, uh, as we're progressing, we'll figure all of this out. This is, I think, the group I wanted to cast the most. Because you have Machine, you have Dentarg, you had Jesse. I don't know a lot about Starsley's play. But Dentarg, a hero over at CPL, as is Machine. Both are incredible players. Machine, I think, is the favorite to come out of this group. But Jesse, an incredibly strong player as well. Any of these people advancing would be exciting. And this is one of those groups I looked at and was kind of had the exclamation point and got a little bit uh, giddy about overall. It looks like Starsley is going to go ahead and scout the bottom right-hand corner with his first probe instead of his last probe. Machine scouting that direction, so isn't going to get first scout. Did uh, Machine, if you guys are unfamiliar with him, I've had a whole bunch of YouTube casts with him. Tends to be one of those guys. He was in Gosu League not that long ago. He, at various times in his Brood War career has been considered the best, if not one of the top few Zerg in North America. It really depends on what shape he's in. He's been a little bit busier lately because he's an important guy out in the world doing lots of important things. Uh, I want to brag about him. He's probably the nicest guy in the community and one of my favorite people in Brood War at large. Just want to throw that out there. That's my bias. That's always my bias when it comes to machine in the matches. Looks like he is going to get the scout in. He's going to see that Nexus first. He's not going to really be able to do anything about it because it looks like he did open up for, I think, 11, 12 hatch, something around there. And that was very risky on Starsley's side because he went ahead and dropped that without any scouting information. He's going to see the spawning, uh, able to sneak in, get the scouting information from here. But machine plays a very macro-oriented smothering style. That, and he has really strong troop movement in the mid game and late game. And he definitely has that Sauron Zerg play when it gets into the late game where you just see streams of units building absolutely everywhere. One last probe able to confirm that third hatchery. Does want to keep that probe alive to go ahead and... Right now, Machine actually not opting to build any Zerg links. A cannon. This cannon might have been able to wait, actually, with that, all that scouting information. But a gateway out in front. Might have been able to wait. Finally, two Zerglings being produced. But Starsley going to be able to go ahead and... Ooh, he's going to harass that drone a little bit, the natural. But going to be able to explicitly see the drone counts. And that is very important on Ascension because Ascension is one of those maps where 973 play is very, very possible. Especially, you can see where Hydrolis can get an advantage coming from the high ground here. Escape routes along that. Ooh, the Zerglings able to get a brief drop on here. And this is now this is now choice time here for Machine as he hits the 150 gas point. Is he going to opt for Hydrolis then? He is. He's going to go for that 973 play. I like the second Zealot follow-up for scouting information moving out for Starsley to just confirm. It looks, he wants to, looks like he wants to go ahead and start a sailing or at least get a look at the probe count or the probe count, the drone count at that third. And it looks like yeah, the Zergling blocking the gap. So this Zealot needs to... It's going to see that this isn't saturated yet, which is pretty normal. But he needs to go ahead and migrate towards the natural expansion to kind of confirm things. It looks like instead he's going to opt to try to get a kill. That probe able to sneak the way around. Working on that drone. The drone is able to escape. More Zerglings joining the fray. A Zealot and a probe with decent micro can take on. But not when they're split like that. The probe wiped out. There's still four Zerglings standing. Hydro's speed's now being upgraded. And Starsley needs to be careful because he's moved Zealots up here to the third. There's a lot of Zerglings to potentially swamp or engage this, but there's going to be a lot of Hydralisks to engage and potentially bust down the front. And this is where he needs to be grabbing that information. Instead, he's getting an assimilator. 
he is getting a Stargate and a Citadel of a Dune behind this, but my concern is, is he's once Machine starts pumping those troops, Starsley's not going to be in a position to deal with it. Does and does he see it? Okay, he sees the Hydralisks now. This should be a trigger to just start dro dropping cannons. He's already got one cannon down, and he's going to need to drop several more. Another Zealot actually able to sneak out towards the main. And might be able to get some damage done there. Unharassed. So nice job on Starsley to keep Machine on the defensive. So doing a, a good drone drill right there to go ahead and clean this up. One drone is taken out. And this is going to buy him the critical time he potentially needs to get his front door defenses up. That is going to be several cannons out on the front. And that's going to provoke a fourth hatchery from Machine rather than trying to deal a fourth and a fifth hatchery. So he's going to go ahead and fold back to five hatch Hydra play. Which will be a nice transition into what Starsley is attempting to do. Because it looks like he wants to go for the Bisu build-ish variation here. He has yet to build a Corsair. But if he's going to drop that Templar Archives early and get some Dark Templar out on the map... The Corsair are necessary to knock down the Overlords and that Detection Machine, testing the front just to see how many cannons are there. Upon seeing several cannons, he's going to go ahead and back out. But from here, he can just go ahead and pump those drones. And is Morphing Lair as well. I think he's tr thinking about getting a fast Lurker sooner rather than later. I would not be shocked yet. We're seeing Psystorm being upgraded. Let's we'll see if Starsley go ahead... Go ahead, and uh, he's got plus one weapons. Maybe he gets Zelt leg speed, gets Psy Storm, waits for plus one weapons, and then moves out with High Templar and Zealots to do something in the mid game to break contains to potentially wipe something out. He's got four gateways behind this. Keep in mind, keep in mind, Machine didn't sack an Overlord to sneak in and see what his opponent's doing. Mostly, I think, because he's like, I'm just going to build, 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 and force you to come to me. A six hatchery being planted, a Sutton Colony, and an Evolution Chamber behind this. We do see Lurk... Uh, sorry. Hydralis spawn, so it looks like it is going to be more Hydralis play rather than going for Lurker Contains. The machine's completely backed out of the front. He's just going to group up these Hydralisks at the third base and pile these Hydralisks here. Because this is that's one thing about Ascension, is it's a very defensible map. You can see if the Zealots and everything else try to pile through here, there's going to be a traffic jam. So the best attackable position is this third coming down the ramp. But if Machine can do a bit of dodging, dodge out of that Psy Storm, should be in a good position to deal with it. Level 1 weapons. Starsley moving out. Looks like he's just going to sneak out with these Zealots in this probe. Making motions as though he wants to take his third. And he is, in fact, going to go ahead and grab that third. Machine... Not crazy, don't I think he's going to wait for that Overlord speed before he starts making... Well, maybe not. I was going to say maybe he's going to wait for Overlord speed before he starts making motions, but he's starting to gather up a significant Hydralisk army. First Corsair for Starsley finally moving out, and I think it's going to get obliterated in short order. Takes one shot there. Nice micro to get out of there. He's going to take shots at the nearby Overlord. He needs to kind of get eyes on what Machine is doing. I think this Overlord should be able to get in protective custody soon. And speed will be there in not too long. So taking this base, he's going to try to protect it, it looks like, with speed zealots. And a bit of high Templar tech. The high Templar are going to be critical. Second Forge also going down. Because this is a, a high ground that can eat, you can see where the Hydralis can just peek down. Do some damage, peek right back out. The Corsair sneaking around, looking at the saturation. Pretty decent saturation for Machine overall. He's going to go ahead and have plus one weapons here. He is in, you know, almost able to take out that Corsair. The Corsair critically going to be able to confirm that fourth base. And so Starsley's saying, okay, let's go ahead and play a macro match. But And he's actually way ahead in the supply right now. Way ahead in workers. Machine likes playing macro matches. But as things look, Starsley actually decently ahead. Doing pretty well in tech. Doing pretty well with the weapons upgrades. He's going to saturate that third. Machine is going to go ahead and grab his fourth. But Starsley in a good position. Has the supply that he's looking for. The Hydralisks starting to move forward. Starting to push back. Decent Psystorm 
blanketing the lurkers to the right. There is a lack of an observer for this army. Those zealots eating a lot of damage, and that is one thing. Looking at Starsley's build, that was lacking. Is it just? I don't even see a robo yet. So he was going to have to just shell up and defend. And I don't think expending the side storms in an engagement there. This is where he wanted those side storms saved. Is when machine was just setting up this soft contain over the high ground. Because now what he can do is he can just run down, do some poking fire with these hydralis, pick off a cannon back up, and if Starsley tries to engage with anything but Size Storm, the Zelts are going to have to walk across a Lurker minefield. And Starsley really can't stop Machine, really can't slow his economy down now. Machine can go ahead and just pump as many drones as he wants behind this. Looks like he wants to go for a drop. This is a, He's got double evolution chambers as well, but I like the drop play. Because Ascension does have this huge back drop, droppable area. And you can see where a lot of stuff could get shredded very, very rapidly. It's in one particular area. The third is a distance to contain. Starsley actually going ahead and trying to grab his fourth, which is going to make that those drops even more powerful. So Starsley like, yeah, let's play strong economic game. And Machine actually, yeah, eating a huge size storm right there, but poking away at that cannon. Another good size storm on the high ground, trying to clean up some of these lurkers, but that was what Machine exactly wanted to do. Unfortunately, the size storm's not getting as much as I think Starsley was hoping for, and Machine doing exactly what he... So, actually, I like that. Morphing the weak lurkers. He can just replenish this army and continue to do more of the same. Poke down, trigger some cannon attack, force the zealots back above. He's got another grouping of Hydralis and Lurkers, and he can keep doing that assault. And actually, if he goes ahead and turns around and goes for one of those assaults... Ooh, he's got a single... Is he going to group up another Lurker? Maybe that was just protective to make sure it wasn't getting Size Storm. I don't know if he revealed that he has drop yet or not. But Machine does need to do something to attack into Starsley soon. Because otherwise, he's just going to have a larger economic lead. He's getting his fourth base now. Machine's on four bases as well. His supply count is surging. He's got a lot of Dragoons to deal with potential Lurkers out there. Decent gateway count. A lot of Sidestorm with these Lurkers. And the Observers are starting to take the field as well, which is going to make it harder to hold this high ground. Some units unburring. Here comes the drop. I was looking for it. In the main, Sidestorming as things are unloading. You can see the units trying to make their way this direction. At the very least, a lot of probes getting taken out. The Corsair, the single Corsair getting wiped out. And where's the Observer? The Observer not there to help with anything. So a lot of stuff going to get damaged. I'm not, so at least the probes getting killed. I, I don't know about the rest, how much additional infrastructure is going to get wiped out. And still no Observer overhead. There, Okay, finally there's an Observer to the north. But a nice distractionary attack. Unfortunately for Machine, it wasn't... Felt a little bit impatient. Because if he coupled this with an attack, I think, over that third base, might have gotten more out of it. Instead, it looks like it was cleaned up fairly decently. Starsley still with the worker lead, dropping yet another cannon. Wasn't able to get the forge. And Starsley with a, I believe, an upgraded... Sorry, level 2 weapons is there for the Hydralisks. So it's going to be somewhat even. But Machine still doesn't have hive tech. Starsley's on four bases. He can go ahead and surge to his 200 and 200 count. And Machine's going to need to keep him off balance. Either through drops or something. Looks like he's going to go ahead and try to grab an additional expansion. Starsley has just done a great job, though, of sticking on top of this. And Overlord is, in fact, going to scout the lone probe trying to take this base. So it's not long for life. Looking for the attack on the map. Starsley now moving up, going ahead and clearing out that... So basically, like, the map's divided. Machine's going to go ahead and take this mineral only. But he really needs to start getting in some engagement, getting some favorable trade. Because right now, Starsley has a very strongly upgraded army. Has an upgrade lead. And is nearing 200 supply. Has a stronger economy, which is rare versus Machine. However, army control not there. Losing some... Zealots in the mid-game. This is where a machine tends to be very, very strong, is the mid-game unit movement. Some Zealots sneaking across. Machine was trying to sneak a hatchery in that upper right-hand corner. The Zealots should be able to disrupt that. The Zerglings also checking everything else. 
Yeah, these zealots just pocketing. And Starsley getting aggressive on the map, looking for a mid... Great side storm. A little bit of a, a whiff of a side storm over to the left. Machine trying to distance out. I like the unit cohesion on Starsley's part, though. Has the observers. They're up front leading with the Dragoons to go ahead and peck away. The Zealots have marched in here. There's a look. So, forced to cancellation there. More beautiful side storms. And Machine, particularly being behind on economy, can't afford to eat this side storm. It looks like he's not able to pick off that High Templar to the south. Machine pressing this army from the right. It is going to group up with the rest of those Zealots. The Zealots trying to wander in. There is a Sunken Colony to go ahead and help defend against that. A lone drone, what is he doing? Getting, I guess, battle drone looking to scout. Starsley in a good position to close out this match. He can assault from the high ground here. If he has any, si the question in my mind is, does he have any Psy Storm left? Looks like he has a handful of storms to work with to help clear out some of these lurker or soften them up. But rather than get aggressive over that mineral only, he's going to go ahead and Play cautiously, back up, take this mineral only at the interior 3 o'clock location. A lot of territory to cover. I'm actually am not sure I like this maneuver right now, knowing that drop is out there and knowing that Machine still has a standing army. Because if he's not getting aggressive behind this, this is a huge amount of territory to cover. And Hive, this is giving time for Hive Tech to come online. Adrenal Upgrade's about halfway finished. Defiler Mound's on the way. And trying to defend bases across multiple positions with Adrenal Upgraded Zerglings and Drop as a factor, it becomes a tall order to defend absolutely everything. A huge amount of cannons being dropped. Is There, gonna, there is a robotic facility coming online. So Reavers can be a neutralizing factor there. A single Overlord with a Lurker or an... <laughs> With a single lurker going to drop on the high ground? Looks like it's just going to explore to the north. Scramble. There is a single zealot up to that location. Machine just playing more of a defensive macro game. Starsley has hit 200 supply. Level 3 weapons. So he's starting to march around and bully. The Hydra is trying to sneak through and pick off the High Templar. Eating a little bit of side storm for their effort. Starsley now swinging to the south. Clearing out. Doing a pretty good job of clearing out. The Lurker is without losing too many Zealots, but his army is getting thinned out. Pick off of two Observers on the front. The third Observer needs to be very, very careful. Now it's going to be up to the Psystorm and the Dragoons. A little bit of empty Psystorm here from Starsley. A second Psystorm connects. He needs to be... But Machine, through superior troop positioning and patience, looks like he is going to be able to swarm the rest of this army and wipe it out despite being behind in upgrades and despite being behind in the overall unit count now starting to sweep in work on some of these cannons eating a lot of side storm there which is clearing the rest of that count up and really press yeah just doing a complete army swap it looks like looking to see if there was an opportunity for a drop a shuttle and some reavers Going ahead and dropping. And now this is turning into... Yeah, macro versus macro. Who's going to starve who out? Worker count a bit even. This base is going to be hard to crack with those two Reavers and that shuttle that's protectively alongside. But Starsley, he's still mining at his main even. Although only momentarily. So he's going to be basically at four base. And that's going to be four base versus... Well, it's going to be four base versus six base. But the 6th base is not yet saturated. It looks like Machine's trying to defend it up. Machine, this is his preferred style of play. Defiler Mound, Consume being upgraded. So it won't be too long before Swarm's there. Plus one Carapace also coming online. So we might see a tech switch into Mutalisk. And Mutalisk, with that armor upgrade... A whole slew of them coming into the main could be huge. Looks like I missed a drop that got cleaned up. It's a little bit hard to see. I should have done a collar swap at the beginning. Starsley misrallying some troops, so they're eating a lot of Lurker Fire before engaging. And that's also giving Machine some time to respond. He's pushing in. They're pinned a little bit against this gap, and those he does need to start worrying about those Zerglings. Nice Psystrom dodges, and Lurker's just pelting this army. 
as it's trying to walk through. So as it's coming through this gap, yeah, very damaged. It looks like it wants to make a swing and a strike at this space in the upper right-hand corner. Machine repositioning to go ahead and engage that. If he has enough side storm, engaging in these gaps can be a challenge. But it looks like there's only one side storm left in the package. So he's going to go ahead and back off. Maybe he can secure a position and start taking these bases in the bottom right. Do a map split from there. Once this level one armor finishes, I'm going to look for a quick mutilisk tech switch. But you can just kind of see the way the map's drawn out. Ooh, nice reaver drop. That reaver might lose his life for it. Good side storm as well. So reaver's taken out. The shuttle is going to escape. Looks like it's going to exchange with two more reavers in a fight for the bottom right. Some probes transferring, just getting obliterated by the lurkers as they're coming across midfield. There's still... That actually might have done Starsley a favor, though, because he wants to keep the probe count where it's at right this second so he can make sure to have good troop counts behind this. Still has some units staged in the main just in case there drops there. Machine grouping up, but Starsley basically ele moving troops around, elevatoring, and, re and taking the main in the bottom right to try to maintain the long-term economic lead. Swarm being dropped... Great size storm from Starsley to chew through a lot of these units. The cannons are nullified, but that doesn't nullify those Reavers with their splash damage. Cannon scooping it up. High Templar is wiped out. And the thing with these units trapped down here is that Starsley's... He can't really help defend. He's got to rely on those Reavers and Reavers alone to defend this base. The cannons wiped out. More Hydralists moving in. More Defilers moving forward as well. Trying to elevate it. more of these Reavers forward. A Plague was dropped, but it looks like it only caught that Pylon and that Robotics Facility. Re-unloading, but it looks like this space currently going to hold. With the Reaver defense, maybe. Some more units are scooping up and making their way. Another Plague dropped. The Zergling's filtering in. The shuttle scooped up. And this base continually being assaulted. Machine pouring in more troops, more lurkers crawling forward. The Defiler is there. Zerglings and Hydralisks now peeling in. The cannons all but gone. There's two remaining. One remaining. It's gone. The robotics facility is not long for life. And there are three shuttles here that are empty. That once had Reavers that have been emptied from this base. This Nexus is going to fall. And now Machine starting to make moves. Testing that right hand corner. It's much more defensible from that position though. But Machine able to get supply lead now. And cut one base out of Starsley's hands. Zelt's taking a bit of free fire here. Cannons morphing in. A robotic facility being built. A sizable drop might be able to penetrate this because this is, again, a very droppable base and there is a bulkhead to do so. Dark Templar is starting to migrate out, hoping to find... But Machine's been diligent keeping Overlords with his attack force. It looks like he's peeking at this bottom right-hand base. Units filtering in this direction. They're a good amount of size storm pelting that gap. And this is a very size stormable area. But still, cannons are falling. More lurkers moving in. Some reinforcements trying to make their way across. It looks like they might be able to get here in time. But unfortunately, a lot of them are Dragoons. And it looks like, yeah, that is going to be cleaned up by machines. So machines going to have to back up and choose another engagement point. Machines may in mind out. He's getting a greater Spire now. Potentially to do the tech switch to some Guardians, and that could be a really devastating tech switch. But So his third's mind out, his main's mind out, his natural expansion's going to be mind out. He's going to be on three bases. Starsley's sitting on two bases himself. Starsley, now with an economic lead, basically a maxed upgraded army versus a potentially maxed upgraded army, catching, finding some lurkers out in the middle. He's looking to potentially carve out some of Machine's bases either in the upper right-hand corner or in the inside 12 o'clock location. 
This base very exposed. Machine was transferring drones that direction as well. But Starsley diving on this base. It looks like he's easily going to be able to wipe it out. And it's a short order to move from there to the upper right. Some Zerglings trying to filter in. They are able to get on the Dragoons from the back corner. The hatchery is not being focused down. Psystorm being dropped. Clearing out a lot of these units. But all to win this, all he has to do is turn around, focus fire that hatchery before reinforcements can get here. There, that's taken out. Machine's still trying to push in troops. He's got a decent bank behind this. Machine still has enough resources where he can kind of absorb that attack if he can just clean this out and reestablish it. The Dragoon's now making their way upper right. Some Hydralisks peeling in that direction. They are fully upgraded. No Observer with this army. So the High Templar, is, and he's a ways away from Sidestorm, so that single Lurker will provide a bit of a buffer defense. Machine immediately rebuilding that 3 o'clock location. Starsley doing a great job macroing, getting that army right back up and running. He's also got a shuttle that can go ahead and start sneaking out. And I'm looking for Mutalisks, a second Spire. Interesting play. I'm looking for a Mutalisk swap someplace. And when are they going to start fielding? Oh, Reaver with an exposed drone line. Machine sees it, able to split. Able to get some decent kills, not able to get much else out of it. And Starsley quietly trying to take that inside 9 o'clock location as well. Crazy macro match. Reaver dropped in the low ground, still no observer, getting two more drones. So doing a good job of picking off portions of the economy, slowing things down. Now Scourge finally in the air to help deal with that. But this is a critical mining base for Machine right now. He's down to 46 drones. Starsley still pumping. I think he might be able to walk out in not too long and go ahead and take the natural expansion here, but looks like Machine has discovered this inside 9 o'clock base. Trying to save this with Zealots. Those Hydralists are going to be able to punch through that Nexus really rapidly, and I don't think the reinforcements are going to get here in time. Bit of a whiff of a Psy Storm. Machine trying to dance through it, but there's still plenty of Psy Storm to spare. More reinforcements sweeping across. They want to pick off these High Templar, clear out these Archons. But Machine eating a lot of lightning in the air. And not the exchanges he was looking for. Particularly upon losing a lot of drones in those previous exchanges. Oof, getting obliterated there. So Starsley getting really good exchanges here. Yes, he lost this interior 9, but he's still running on A base at least. And now the Guardians starting to move forward. Getting a little bit too aggressive over that corner. Starsley still focusing on this base, and Starsley needs to get something to deal with these Guardians because he does have Psystorm nearby. He does have Dragoons. But if he loses this right-hand corner, this is his one mining base as the 4 o'clock position just about to mine out. And that will put Machine on three bases versus one. And he'll just be able to outproduce him over the long haul. Losing control of his army, the Lurker is wiping out these High Templar and Dragoons. While he's distracted, Reaver is just sitting there, still building scarabs, but going to die with them. And Machine, starting to get aggressive, wants to go ahead and plug this gap to just... I don't think he wants to take this base. He just wants to go ahead and deny this base at the interior 9 o'clock location. Finally, a Corsair moving up, but there's Scourge right there to engage it as well. So this bottom right hand base, very vulnerable. Never mind, Machine going to go ahead and grab this. So Starsley needs to migrate troops all the way from the bottom left-hand corner to the right corner. And there's a lot of lurkers and everything else in the way for Machine. Plus there's Guardians waiting nearby to go ahead and punch through. So very tender situation. And this is turning into the who's going to starve out first situation. Machine doing a pretty good job. Of Macron, he's got decent saturation across three bases. 
Starzling now moving that army across. Machine plugging the gap with a lurker. No observer alongside this, so those zealots... Not, yeah, and it looks like he was hunting for the observer. There's the observer. The Scourge a little out of, out of position to nail it. Are they going to find it now? Now able to land on it. But the lurkers have already been cleaned up. Some probes trying to transfer alongside with this, but there's a lot of... They're unfortunately in front of the army, so they're going to get obliterated. And I don't think that was to clean up supply. Some Hydralisks are going to go ahead and test the rest of this. And a big stream of black in the form of Hydralisks and Zerglings making their way towards the right-hand base. So Machine, happy to just cap this 9 o'clock interior. He can mine that later at leisure. He has a big supply lead. Starsley kind of huddled in a corner mining in this bottom right. He's starting to move up to go ahead and take this inside 9 o'clock location. But this is a very, very tentative location to try to defend. Because look at Machine's troop positioning. He's got on base. And oh, these probes keep transferring. It looks like they're di some are distance mining, but they're trying to return to the nearest Nexus, which is bottom right, instead of the 4 o'clock location. So now an Nexus being dropped. I don't know how long that's going to last. And more Archons moving across the map. But you can see the, the control problems for Starsley. He's got to walk across enemy territory to get things accomplished. Empty size storms. More reinforcements flooding across here. So Machine can honestly sit back. I don't know that he even needs to penetrate this 3 o'clock base. He can just continue mining where he's at. And he also has the option, while Starsley's out of position, to potentially do a counterattack at the natural expansion of Main, although it would take a while to chew through all those cannons there. <laughs> He's going to go ahead and take the natural expansion here while diving in to the inside. Three location. It looks like thinking better of it and realizing that there's a Reaver right there. Bringing the Guardians in to work. But a huge amount of size Storm. From Starsley, emptying that attack force. The Defiler somehow surviving all of that and sneaking through. And there's just an overwhelming amount of mass for Machine. So despite all of that Psy Storm, despite the Reaver, despite everything else, that base getting canceled. And the Guardians once again sweeping out to start doing their work against these Reavers. Unfortunately, Reavers do not attack air. And they need to be very careful because it's... Not going to be long before potentially Scourger right here. Nice Psy Storm to clear out those last two Guardians. Well, actually, sorry, there's one remaining. So Machine denying this. He's on four bases. Well, he's, yeah, basically on four bases. One, two, three, four. Continuing to poke at the last remaining base of Starsley. Mutalists are rejoining. They're going to start poking away. They have level 3 Carapace. Wow. Some more Guardians here. And they're now the Reaver's realizing there's a hatchery. They're trying to do some damage. Machine with a group nearby to attack any location he wants, really. Everything is in blue flames in the bottom right. Still minerals coming in. But Machine currently has a pretty strong grip on this match. 20 supply ahead. A shuttle weaving through, eating some spore colony damage. It gets wiped out. One Reaver down. It got one drone out of all of that. Not the exchanges Starsly needed. Guardians continuing to assail the robotics facility. There is a High Templar with 17 kills. A whiff of a Psy Storm right there. Looks like it got the edge of a Guardian. A Guardian moving a little bit too far into attack fire. But Starsly... Yeah, he's got a lot of idle probes with nowhere to go. A huge... That's one nice thing for Protoss late game, though, is if all your mining is gas, you can always build Archons, and Archons are nothing to sniff at. Machine pushing in, clearing out what's left of the 4 o'clock base. A bit of a pirate victory, though, because this is just costing him troops to clear out stuff that Starsley wasn't planning on using anyway. Big grouping of Archons. The only thing missing is that level 3 shield upgrade. 
Wall of Flame making its way to the inside 9 o'clock. Archon's quickly being wiped out. Machine looks like he was engaging that bottom right. Problem for Sarsley is even if he wipes out this base, he still needs to somehow defend bottom right and wipe out additional bases. Machine moving up with some Zerglings, but these Archons will eat infinite Zerglings. Yeah, they don't last very long. So two Atries wiped out there. Stream of units. He does need, yeah, Hydralisks. Plague doesn't do a lot to Archons. More Psy Storms trying to soften the rest of this army up. But the Archon count is dwindling against these Hydralisks. Level 3 Spines just does a lot of damage very, very rapidly. The High Templar, you can hear them getting cleaned up as well. And this might be the last hurrah. Supply has plummeted. Four Starsley, two Archons trying to run free, find what they can. Not even bothering attack. They're like, please let me just get to a drone line and kill a drone before I join the great, what is it, the Kala? Able to get some nice, nice, able to get some drones, honorable death. Single Corsair working against the Guardian that's just sitting there, happy to get shot in the face, apparently. Just staring at it. Look at him. What a boss. It's like, I'm just going to go, ahead. I don't even care. Now moving into Spore Colony range. Psystorm over the rest of these troops. Actually opening up the egg, which is bad news for Starsley. So Starsley basically has gas to work with. He's tr Machine's distance mining at the 9 o'clock. He's mined out at the mineral only. He's effectively still mining at four bases, though. So still has a lot to work with. Double, not double the supply. Considerable supply lead. Still poking with these Guardians bottom right. And it's up to Starsley to make something happen. Machine can just sit back, poke away at this. Force out Psystorms with his Guardians. And it's just going to be a matter of time before... Machine can just clear everything out. As far as bases that are left to take, this needs to be cleared out and... Resecured, which is a tall order. Or this needs to be cleared out and secured, which again, also a tall order. Some zealots grouping up to maybe try to make that happen someplace. I don't see any observers, and there are a lot of lurkers on the field, though. Shenanigans continue at that bottom right. A scourge fleet moving in. Maybe a little bit too many scourge to deal with that amount of Corsair. Starsley sitting at 117 supply versus 171. Which feels like it should be a palindrome. I don't think it is, though. Archon's grouped up. He wants to go ahead and take a shot in. The Guardians no longer care. Where are those Scourge? The Scourge now, yeah, just going to wander in. There's no cannon to protect, so they're going to get forced back. More Psystorm being dropped. It is going to get a single Guardian. Just a clump of Hydralisks in between here. Where's the size storm? There's the size storm. That's about as good a size storm as you can ask for. So trying to bully up into the to wipe out this three o'clock, and wow, the sword storm just shredding those hydralisks. But while that's happening, the probes are starting to be covered in acid here in the bottom right. Plague catching a couple units. More size storm being dropped. Machine needs to repel this army. Moving in with some Zerglings and Hydralis. Kind of piecemeal to make it happen. More Psy Storm. Clearing those units up. Looks like he is going to be able to catch these High Templar from underneath. Unfortunately for Starsley, this kind of feels like wading through a marsh. Where, yeah, it's just a handful of troops there, a handful of troops there. But that's happening while Guardians are attacking your Nexus in the bottom right. And while you don't have establishment of the inside 3 o'clock mineral only. Minerals trickling trickling in and starting to run out for Starsley. Machine still has a decent sized bank. Clearing out what is left. We got one more. It looks like small. I almost want to call this like a scouting force more than anything. Scattered units everywhere for Starsley. Looking for opportunities. Machine just taking his time. Sending control groups of Hydralis doesn't even care about eating Psystorm anymore. The Nexus is gone, bottom right. So the probes that are here, or sorry, the minerals that are in 
Stars Lee's bank are the last minerals to his name, and it is a cleanup operation for a machine. Two more side storms drop. There's still plenty of storm left in some of these high Templar, so it might take a little while, but it looks like machine is going to be the victor in this match. A bit rude here taking this hatchery while the pylons still see it. This is a moment where Starsley should, uh, Starsley should probably GG and exit this match. As there's not a lot left, but he still wants to fight to the last man. More Psystorm being dropped. He wants to have that last attack on this hatchery. The glorious Protoss going to eat some plague for his efforts. The Observer's down, and there's the GG moment. Machine takes the win, advances to the winner's bracket. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.